All right, so let's get started making our first GPT. Now, I'm warning you, this is going to be completely useless as a, a GPT. It will provide no real value, but we're going to get a taste of the interface and the tooling. So the first thing we have to do is if we go to ChatGPT, chat.openai.com, you have to click on Explore GPTs and then Create in the top right corner. So if you click Explore, it takes us to, I guess, what they call the GPT store, although it's not actually a store at the moment. I think everything is free, but this just features, you know, charts and trending custom GPTs other developers have made. But we are going to make our own, so we're going to click on that green Create button, and we'll see a split screen where there's two panels. On the left, we have all of the configuration uh, and tooling around defining our custom GPT. What is its name? What are the instructions? Um, actions, when we get there, that's a very large part of this course. We'll go down here. We can define our own custom actions to talk to and communicate with third-party APIs. And then on the right-hand side, we have a preview where we can chat with our custom GPT. At the moment, I can't do anything on the right side because I haven't defined any functionality on the left. So there are a couple of ways of creating a custom GPT. The easiest way to start at least, is to use the GPT Builder that I'll detail in the next video. But in this video, we'll just write some very basic instructions right here where it says instructions. At the end of the day, a GPT basically boils down to, I should say a custom GPT, boils down to some instructions, a fancy prompt that is sent along with all of your requests that you make when you talk to that GPT. When we get to action, things get a bit more complicated. We can actually start expanding upon the, you know, the functionality uh, that regular old chat GPT or any of the GPT models don't have natively. But for now, we're basically just going to write a prompt that tells the GPT what it should do, what it is, how it should respond. So right here under instructions, I could put something very simple, like only reply to users with a single word, just one word. And as soon as I give it some instructions, you'll see that the right-hand preview panel is now unlocked. I can chat with my preview of my custom GPT and I'll try something like, hello, how are you today? And let's see if it in fact responds with one word. It does, fine. How about something that usually would uh, result in multiple words, write me a poem. Impossible. <laughs> Beautiful poem. All right, so it seems to be working. You know, this is not useful in any way, but that is technically our first little custom GPT, which is just a set of instructions that are then sort of wrapped around this chat interface. My instructions will be sent with every single request, every single time I try and talk to the model. So let's just do one more. Can you say more than one word? No. Okay. Let's try something slightly different. Again, this is not useful, but I just want you to see how this works. Uh, let's do respond only in rhymes. I can never spell rhymes. Your output must always rhyme. Now on the right-hand side, you'll see that the preview has some grayed out content, it's sort of faded. That's to indicate that the GPT has since been updated. It has new instructions, a new name, new something, uh, compared to when this conversation took place. So it preserves that so we can see the previous history, but uh, it grays it out to indicate it's changed, right? We've updated our custom GPT. So now I'll talk to it again. How are you doing? And hopefully we get a rhyming multi-word response. I'm just fine in the cloud where I reside, a digital being with information wide. No feelings to hide, no sun or moon tide. Okay, but here to assist with AI as my guide. Let's try something a little bit different. What is the largest marine mammal? Oh, I didn't spell mammal right, but I'm sure I can figure it out. And it's working, right? It's telling me about the blue whale in rhyme. Okay. So technically, that is a custom GPT. Uh, again, I just wanted to introduce this sort of two-panel interface, test things on the right, and then refactor, update your configuration, your instructions. We haven't really learned about what all this stuff does yet or what this create panel does, but that's coming up. Most important is just the fact that we can 
talk to our custom GPT as we build it on the right-hand side. Also note that it says draft here, and if I navigate away, you might think I've lost it because I never saved it, but if I go to my GPTs right next to that create button, there's another way to create one here too. Um, here's my untitled GPT. If I go to configure, you can see its instructions are still preserved, but saving it is a separate thing where we can share it publicly or to people with a link or just leave it private to only me. We can categorize it. There's other functionality we'll cover later when we have something we feel like we actually want to share. Uh, so you don't have to click that save button in order to have those drafts preserved. You can see I have quite a few untitled drafts as well as some published ones. Uh, but most of my history here as far as creating this course is just unpublished drafts. Okay. Okay.